Hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> we are here today. We're back here today to study the word of the Lord. Um, obviously, you can see that my energy is a bit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, just came back from the gym, and um, pretty much just very happy. And um, yeah, like God is good. God is good all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, like I'm just so grateful. Like everything is in like exactly like sample song, but you know, like I'm just so grateful for what that I'm alive, that I'm breathing, you know. It's the little things. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Ah, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I hope your day went well. And um, we give God the glory because you know yeah like life gets better with jesus you know yesterday we had a discussion that i'm actually very like you know i was happy we talked about it if you haven't watched the video and i'm gonna change the thumbnail i just feel like the thumbnail the photo is a bit like it just seems too serious <laughs> i was looking for a photo to use but i'm like so that i kind of like the photo but it wasn't when I did cut it out, it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. And I just feel very like, you know, those, um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna insult myself on here, but I just feel like the thumbnail could be better because the message is pretty vital. So I'm gonna change the thumbnail. I've been wanting to do it like since morning, but I don't know. I don't know, I've just been busy, but I'm gonna change it. Um, there's just a lot to do. Um, the topic for yesterday Bible study was God's wisdom over your own Genesis chapter 37. That discussion was very, very like, it was very, it, I feel like it's something that is necessary in this time. Like we have to talk about it, you know, um, and especially because like people are waiting for stuff, people are, you know, um, being disappointed, you know, by, something or someone in their lives maybe you're just disappointed you know um about or with the lord or how to even say it like the lord disappointed you in a way or you might feel a bit frustrated and i'm telling you like god's wisdom is better than your own um so we're going to pray before we actually begin anything at all every father i thank you lord for your word today oh lord abba father be thou exalted O lord in jesus name thank you father for giving us your word today for bringing us here even to glean from your word and to seek you, O oh Lord. And I just glorify your name, Father. I acknowledge that you are omnipotent. You are God everlasting, greatest of the greatest. You are the King of Kings, the one who created heaven and earth. Nothing is ever too so important apart from you. Father, you are the very essence of our being and we're here to hear what you have to say to us. And I pray that you will speak to us today. I invite the Holy Spirit into this space, into this Bible study in Jesus' name. Abba, prepare our spirit to receive your word, O Lord. Thank you, Father. I surrender myself unto you. Father, Lord, speak through me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ah, so yesterday's conversation was actually very interesting because we talked about, um, you know, god's wisdom god's wisdom is that we should be at peace with one another and we should love one another and we talked about you know joseph and how that val those values are depicted in the life of joseph and it was a pretty interesting conversation um we went in depth and if you want to watch that video i definitely suggest that you should there's just so much to glean from that that video i would definitely you know recommend it because even i i watched it after and like i had it was like okay this is pretty interesting you know like it just kind of gives you a fresh perspective on why you should love people and how that could actually deepen your relationship with the lord vice versa because again you know your relationship with god will determine how you treat other people Okay, so if you have a deep relationship with God, you're most likely going to treat people very well. Okay, um, so yeah, that's basically what we talked about yesterday and pretty excited to talk about this one today. We're still talking about the Joseph story, Jacob's story, Esau's story, you know, the nitty gritty, the beginning of the Bible, Genesis, and we're doing Genesis chapter 39 today. I'm going to start and Joseph was brought down to Egypt and potiphar oh hold on um we're doing sorry we're doing genesis chapter 38 today let's not jump the gun and it came to pass at that time that judah went down from his brethren and turned 
into a certain Adul Adulamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. So he turned into a certain um, Adulamite whose name was um, was Hira. And uh, so basically, I guess like he went to this man's household and then he saw the girl in his household, the household of Hira. And then he saw a daughter, okay, of a certain, or maybe a land or household, we're not very sure, but it was a, it was a certain Adulamite, okay? So it's like a person who was in his household, I believe, yeah. And um, he saw a, a girl um she's this daughter of a canaanite and her name is shua we're not sure a status the position um but that she's a servant a maid um or like a daughter of an important person but we just see that you know she's just someone that we know you know her name is shua and he took her and went in onto her and she conceived and bare a son okay um and he, he called his name er okay First of all, we kind of already know that the Lord doesn't really approve with the Israelite people, you know, actually marrying outside of their family, right? Um, and I think it's pretty surprising that Judah would make the decision to, and a pretty, um, a pretty impulsive decision as well to go in on a Canaanite girl. And she actually got pregnant. There wasn't any, you know, specific wedding or anything like that. And no formal, you know, um, celebration. It was only just like, oh, I see you. I like you. Let's get down to it. And then she basically conceived and she had a son. And then she he called his name Er. Kind of like, <laughs> don't let me start. Guess what I was going to say? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to say it. You say it in your mind. I'm not saying it. And she conceived again. I'm like, oh, one time was enough. Well, she conceived again. Sure, sure she did. And bear a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at Shezib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife. Okay, now this is like he, he took a wife, you know. Like he saw this one. The Shua was the girl that he saw and uh, took her, you know, like took her. And he basically went in on her, you know. But this one is like it took a wife, you know. Like this is different. Like it took a wife for her. His firstborn, whose name was Tamar, okay. Um, so her name was Tamar, and her Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord. I'm like, how? What do you expect? <laughs> that this guy is gonna be like only a down, and his mother is Canaanite. It cannot work. Like she's gonna teach him all that she, all that she knows, and is definitely gonna become just like the other Canaanites, you know. And the Lord slew him, you know, like pretty direct. And Judah said unto Onan, go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her and raise up seeds to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seeds should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spewed it on the ground. So he basically like... You know, they had sexual intercourse and he basically like ejaculated, you know, into like on the floor. Um, that might be a bit too graphic, but like that's basically what the word of the Lord says. He says, lest that she should give seed to his brother. So he doesn't want to um, know that he's the father of a child whose name is going to be his brother's name. Hence, you know, he, that's not his hair okay and it says and the thing which he did displeased the lord wherefore he slew him also the lord slew him too then said judah to tamar his daughter-in-law remain a widow as thou as thy father's house i'm sorry remain a widow at thy father's house that's pretty interesting so again it's still tamar that's the wife of this guy um er okay um her name is wait hold on yeah er that's tamar um and er died and on and went in on her and then he didn't want to basically impregnate her and then he died too um and i think like i want to actually talk about that what happened there like why is that you know the lord actually smote you know this 
sons of you know precious judah <laughs> in quotes okay it kind of reminds me of aaron's sons as well when they did something funny you know in actually doing the ritual for the lord for remission of sin for the children of israel and also for them um and for the sanctuary um yeah the lord smote them and i think it's pretty important that we understand that the israelite people they are chosen people they are supposed to be consecrated to the lord like they are the lord's people and so they've been sanctified unto the lord and so the lord is yeah he said it, it displeased the lord wherefore he slew him also so they did something that did displease the lord well he did something that displeased the lord onan right um did he go to the lord for um you know remission of sins or something like that it did not probably probably thought that you know it was okay that you know that's his life his life is his own as as many of us think you know like our lives are our own but you don't understand when you give your life to christ that you become the lord um also you know i feel like we sometimes have like a certain misunderstanding about who god is um we don't see god as god the head like god is god powerful and mighty you know god of heaven and god of the earth you know he is big mighty you know is everything and we are in it you know is the one that created us we are nothing before the lord like we are nothing we are the only body subjects you know he created us like god is mighty god is powerful you know god controls everything like god has authority over every person everything that there is to exist in this world and so and that god wants to have a relationship with you by the way but doesn't negate the fact that god is god um i think you know there was one time that we were at eg um with a, a fellowship that experiencing god it's a fellowship like a it's a course that we're doing and um my pastor basically says something the guy asked a question regarding like um god and god asking us to do something difficult and um you know basically asking like really in interesting questions and the questions i was asking kind of seemed like as if he thought that god was very demanding and god was like you know very like you know like a tear and thomas you know um and i think that it's that's a very interesting perspective to kind of view god from because like many people in the world today like we're all expecting we're all expecting like the, a lot of people are expecting something from god whether it's what are you expecting from the lord whether is it like a job is your husband or wife children um is it you know what are you expecting the lord to do in your life you know you're waiting you're waiting waiting and you know the lord has the power to do it for you but he's not doing it for you you're praying and there's so much unanswered prayers then you begin to think that lord you see me in my pain and my sorrow you see me in my hurt but you don't do anything to help to relieve how i feel so yeah um and that's that's how people that's how we that's how we feel sometimes i know that i've i'm you know i'm in my own season of waiting as well and i'm like sometimes i'm like wow lord i'm so disappointed like why would you allow me to wait this long you know like i just feel very dis dissatisfied with like everything that's going on i just feel like i'm giving my best but i feel like i'm not really getting much in return and we don't really understand god we don't really understand god's wisdom and i feel like you know this is where we need to see god as the lord almighty like everything that happens in this life everything that we are is to give god glory it's to give god the glory when we have that had attitude of servitude we begin to operate differently like we are putting ourselves you know secondary and putting god primary and it's a very hard thing especially like in this day and age where like everything is so accessible to you you can basically like you know 
get something very, very fast. Things are pretty easy nowadays with technology. So it's kind of hard to basically see yourself as like, you know, a subject of the Lord that the Lord is saying that I'm asking you to wait. I know that you're in this pain, but I need you to stay in it. Or I need you to do X, Y, and Z for me because it's what I'm doing in my kingdom now. It's very easy. It's very easy for one to be like, whoa, 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 Lord, this is too much for me. You know, we don't want to be responsible for anything in our, in the century, in the 21st century. Maybe it was like that in the 20, 20th century, but I know I'm, I can only speak for the 20th, 21st century that we are like that. Many, many of us like don't want responsibility. We don't want responsibility for nothing, you know? And um, to serve the Lord is to be a steward. It's to take responsibility for certain things. It's to take responsibility to be a leader, to carry burdens on, on your back. You know, that is what it means to serve. And um, again, like if you change your perspective and see God for who he really is, you know, things will begin to change, you know. Um, it's pretty interesting. I feel like that servitude mindset is something that like, it's something that will, that requires like a lot of like, you know, meditation on the word of the Lord, a lot of communicating with God and, and I, and to serve the Lord requires a lot of discipline too, because like, I want to get to that point where in my faith journey, where like, I'm so grounded and connected to the Holy Spirit, like never before that I've grown so much in like maturity as a person to be able to do exactly what the lord is asking me to do at the very moment even my pastor said he said that you know as you're growing in your faith and uh, the one thing that you'll find that will happen to you is that when the lord does tell you to do something it becomes you know easier you do it faster you're not waiting you know to you know, like feel more comfortable before you do it like when the lord says to do something you do it right away now that is a very efficient servant. That is someone that is willing hundred percent to serve the Lord. Um, there's sometimes like, for example, I wanted to take a photo and this guy, this stranger guy just came to me and it's like, Oh, you want to take a photo? Let me take a photo for you. And I'm like, sure. But then he took the photo. But then I'm like, in my mind, like the spirit of the Lord was literally saying that just tell the Lord, tell him something like Jesus loves you, something like that. But I, I held back because the guy was actually in a rush. I was trying to strike a conversation like, Hey, like, um, this is my name. Like I'm from Nigeria. And it's like, Oh, he's from, um, where is he from again? this place caribbean yeah it's from the caribbean i don't remember exactly the place i do remember but it just doesn't it's not coming to me right now anyways like it just was going and i wish i could just scream at the top of my voice jesus loves you but the thing is that my emotions was a blockage there because i was feeling like the entire time that my pastor was even teaching in church like i was just feeling like too much hurt like it was teaching, you know, about the wisdom of God as well. Like I was just really feeling that, you know, that pain, that wow, like this is really like a lot for me. Like this is, this burden is really a lot. And I just wish that it was like, can you, God, can you just take a little, or can you just like give me strength to bear this, you know? And we did the communion and I knew that the significant, the significance of the communion was to really give me strength so that I can continue to, do the will of my father but at that point like i just really felt like even to take that photo i didn't want to take the photo to begin with like this i just did it like that voice was just like take a photo and the guy came and it just really felt very like like ordained that he really asked to like was there do you know what i mean um and i was like holy spirit like i know that i didn't and i felt really bad like i felt that i, I should have done that I should have screamed at the top of my voice that Jesus loves you. Like Jesus is the only way, the truth and the light. There's no other way except for Jesus. Like there is no other way to happiness, to redemption, you know, except for Jesus. It's only through Jesus, you know. I wish I could just scream and tell him that this is, this is, this is him. Jesus is calling, you know. Um, but I didn't. And I just prayed that the Holy Spirit would just direct him to somebody that will, you know, be bold enough to do it. Um, and I don't know why without, but then I, I'm like, and the Holy Spirit decided to tell me that, you know, you, you're, you're also growing and you basically just give yourself time and not be so hard on yourself. And yeah, um, that Sunday wasn't exactly like, 
you know, the best or the, the most fun. Because, yeah, just like some days are really hard. Some days you just really feel the pain in your body, in your physical body of what you're actually carrying, the burdens that you're carrying. You just really feel it. And there's some days where, like, you feel so much. You feel, like, the Lord has filled you so much that you're willing to give to other people, even though they don't even they don't ask for it, even though they don't appreciate it, you know, even though they push you away, you know, like, yeah. Anyways, um, that's basically that, understanding who God really is and to be a good servant unto the Lord. So you put out there, I've heard someone say that, oh, it's good that, um, I, don't, I don't really want to take the identity of a servant, but I want to take the identity of a son, the son of the Lord. Like, okay, that's pretty interesting. But the Bible talks about how Jesus Christ literally humbled himself as a servant unto the Lord. Like even though it was, the Lord gave him an equal you know, position to him that you be the Lord of this people on my behalf. He said, Jesus Christ humbled himself as a servant unto the Lord to serve the Lord, to do his will. So, and the Bible talks about it, that we have to do like Jesus did, you know? So if you want to operate at, in the sonship, you have to be a servant. There's no, there's not, it's not either or, like it has to be both and, you know? Um, so basically like that's the conversation like why did the lord do that like the lord has full authority we cannot question the lord it, the lord said it was this the lord was displeased with that and that is enough justification that si, si fe, you know the lord didn't see any reason to have mercy on him the lord is righteous the lord is holy the lord is just the lord saw the situation and we don't really know the contest and the sin by sin you know everything that he's been doing but the lord said that hey this guy there is no there is no need for mercy for this guy he needs to be out and i feel like many of us that we are just going doing things that are not really sensible you know maybe the lord has asked to do something you're delaying you're not even you know paying attention like you're not you don't even care about like you don't fear god you know what i mean you don't really fear god and you're just doing life as you you just want to you know like the it's only the mercy of the lord that is keeping your life it's only the mercy of the lord that is still sustaining you so every single day no matter if you're like rebellious or this disobedience you know you have to praise the lord and thank the lord for his mercy like they all the lord that you know that you're not working in his will right now but you have to thank the Lord. Like you by like you have to. You have to. Literally, like you need to talk to him and talk to your father and have a relationship with your father. Like, you know, the Bible talks about that like, our righteousness is nothing but a filthy rag. You need to tell him that he, this is what's going on. And you're just so thankful that he's patient with you. Like you have to communicate with him. That's how that guy died. Okay. That's how he died. God is everlasting. God is king. He is the one that controls every single thing, person, animal, everything in the entire world. He is the head, authority of everything. So, yeah. And it says, then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house not at his own house it says at thy father's house to you shall I, my son be grown for he said lest peradventure he die also as his brethren did and tamar went and dwelt in her father's house and in the process of time the daughter of shua judah's wife died so um Judah's daughter basically died and Judah was comforted and went up onto his sheep shares to Timnath and his friend Irar. Remember the Irar guy from before? And he, that was his friend. That's pretty interesting. That gives us context on the story, doesn't it? Give me one second, guys. Mm. So it gives us context on basically like how did he even see Shua to even marry to 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 go down in onto her. <laughs> Anyways, apparently his friend hooked him up with this.
okay it seems to be working now so it seems like shuar basically um it's really hot in him sorry guys it seems shuar basically ira which is um um judah's friend was the one that actually hooked him up to um to shua and then yeah they, they basically started talking to each other and then they liked each other and then you know yeah i just really hope this thing doesn't really cut in between i really do hope but yeah so anyways that was basically that okay um i don't know should i actually just take this thing off like this because like yeah i think i'm just gonna just take this in the the, cam the microphone because it does this sometimes i don't know i'm sorry guys now you can basically hear me without the microphone i don't know i pressed it and like it basically like just was acting some type of way but it's really hot in here so yeah anyway so we see that it was basically like just it was his friend that you know did the whole thing or like they probably he went to visit his friend and then they saw her and then yeah um so where were we so basically um uh yeah one second yeah it says then judah then said judah to tamar that she should go to her father's house and to remain a widow there and tamar went and dwelt in her father's house and in the process of time the daughter of shua judah's wife died and Judah was comforted and went, um, okay, so the daughter, let's see, mm, is it okay? And it says, let's peradventure he die also, okay, and okay, and it says in the process of time, verse 12, and in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up onto his sheep shares to Timnath. He and his friend, Irar, the Adul Adulamite. And it was told to Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. So we see here that, you know, um, Ira and um, Judah basically went up to Timnath. And it says, And it was told of Tamar, Tamar saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to share his ship. So basically, someone did tell um, Tamar about uh, the whereabouts of her father-in-law, and she puts and she put up her widow's garments off from her, okay, and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath, for she saw that Shela was grown. And she was not given unto him to wife. So um, I don't know who told Tamar that a father in law basically had gone to um where did he go to again? Um Timnath. But she saw an opportunity and also because um a father in law, Judah, did not give Shela to her, her um to um to wife. And it was grown enough, okay, so she was waiting for this young guy to grow up and then him be given to her as a husband or just like to, uh, yeah, as a husband, basically. And it says, when Judah saw her, he thought that she was an harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Wilt thou give me a pledge uh, till thou send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give thee? And she said, Thy sinnet and thy bracelet and thy staff that is in thy hand, thine hand. And he gave it to her and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. So I feel like this. Um, and we stopped at verse eight, 18 so that I don't like miss the miss where we are at okay um so anyways this is pretty interesting like like what you know like why like Shua is still alive she's not dead his wife is still alive 
like if he was there was anything wrong with him that he wanted to you know get down on it like he could just go to his wife and just you know um yeah you know but this guy is looking for an halot do you understand like that behavior is very 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 sinful like it's just very interesting like like why would you go to an halot when you can you know you can take one to yourself like like you know just a second one if you wanted to you know um but again like it's not something that he did even abraham too i believe abraham too he took on an, a, another wife but his wife died when he did that um i don't know if he did and uh, take another one I don't, I don't remember like how many wives did abraham have let's check actually but judah is very interesting like very very interesting So Abraham, he had three wives. Okay, Agar, Agar's, yeah, Agar's like, it's the main the concubine. Well, you say, it's just not the concubine. She's his wife, okay? She was his wife. It's not a concubine situation. And I'm, I could argue this thing to tomorrow. She's not, she was not his concubine. She was, that, yeah, she was his wife. But then it's like, if we talk about this, like in a different perspective, like in regards to Jacob and, you know, the same situation happening to Jacob, you know? repeating circles remember i talked about that like they regarded the women um bilha and um, Mil Mil milka they regarded them as concubines okay um Keturah was the one that abraham actually mar married after sarah died so he did not like just take on to himself like another wife like because he felt he fancied it so this behavior that you know that judah has is very questionable like why do you think that you can just go sleeping with just anybody because of your daughter died um and you just wanted to be comforted or like what exactly is the rationale to this or to this action you know um and that sinful act led to you know confusion you know um so we see here in verse 19 it says and she rose and went away right um they had done a trade it said that's gonna give, give her a gold and she was like well i need kind of like you know collateral we can call it deposit that you will eventually come back with the gold because you know if you run away you know and it's like oh sure i'll give it to you the staff and the synods and uh, you can do you can just hold it i'm gonna come with the gold and you're gonna exchange it back and uh, you can go on with your life basically um and in verse 19, she says, like, and, and, in, and the Bible talks about that she, she rose and went away and laid by her veil from, and laid by her veil from her and put on the garment of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found her not. So the Adulamite is basically Ira, his friend. And that is uh, Shua's father. So that's basically his father-in-law. Okay, his father-in-law is his friend. So, and he couldn't find her. And I think it's pretty interesting. Like, are you getting this whole dynamics? Like, imagine like if, okay, um, I married a guy, okay, and my, for video, not go for <laughs> God forbid. Now, I'm not gonna put myself in this situation. Kai, God forbid. Anyway, somebody, okay? Let's say this person, this person married somebody, eh? Let's say this person married this person, right? Um, so this person, this, this, no, sorry. This person married this person, okay? So her, she, this is her. A father, a father is friends with the husband, okay? And so now he wants to cheat on his wife and her father is helping him to get away with cheating and to basically help him with the whole thing okay how does that freaking get how does that freaking make sense <laughs> freaking makes sense fam how does that freaking make sense it doesn't make any freaking sense but this is what this was literally what was happening like 
He said, even was the one that took the goat and is like looking and to find, like, I couldn't really, I can't, I couldn't find the girl that you just slept with, you know? And he, he, he asked the men of that place saying, where's the allot that was openly by the wayside? And they said, there was no allot in this place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said that there was no allot in this place. And Judah said, let her take it to her. Lest, she, lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid and thou hast not found her. So verse 23, it's pretty interesting as to like how this whole thing basically went down. Like how he thinks that people are going to view what just happened. Like he really did think that people were going to think that, um, you know, what he had done was very shameful. So he didn't really want to bring any attention to that situation. And so all he wanted to do was just bury it, bury the whole situation and let everything just like die down because he didn't want people finding out. And it was like, you know what? Let her have it. We're not going to sound any alarm or anything. Um, we're not going to try to look for her. We're not going to try to do anything. We're just going to let her take everything. You know, we tried. We didn't find her. Let's not say any word about this anymore. And it says, and it came to pass about three months after that it was told to Judah, saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the allot. And also, behold, she is with, uh, with child by whoredom. So basically, like, this is like three months, okay, three months after. I'm not exactly sure if she was the one that was telling people that she actually did what she did. But basically, like, they were telling Judah, right that this is what your daughter in law basically did like she did she played an alert and now she but it did the whole conversation was not that you know judah was the one that actually slept with her they just told him that this was what she did and now she's pregnant okay you can obviously like imagine that she was the one that told them exactly what happened because like you're three months pregnant who impregnated who impregnated you you know, people needed to know and she would have to explain herself because at this point she's at her father's house. So I thought I would definitely like, where did you get this pregnancy from? Who impregnated you? You know, and Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burnt. Can you imagine? Like that was the rationale for this whole situation. And I also want you to like imagine this whole thing. Like this is like the situation that happens in Nigeria um, with women that get that, that are married and the husband apparently, you know, dies and she doesn't really have any child. In the Igbo land, I believe it's in, it's in the Igbo land, um, that she would become the property of the of the husband's family like because they paid they paid for her they paid the bride price they basically paid for her head you understand so she's now their property and this whole situation is happening right now like them trying to pass her from one brother to the other from one uncle to the other like it's something that they would usually do and they would pretty much just force her to you know get married to one of them even though the guy doesn't have a job even though the guy is a very abusive person, like they don't really care. All they want to do is pass down the tradition. So this is like pretty interesting. Like at this point, Judah is like, we own this girl. Like, you know what I mean? Like she's in our family. Like, and she did what she did. Go, where did you get, where did you get, who gave you a pregnant, like who impregnated you? And you know, who, <laughs> where did you get this pregnancy from? You know, and he's like, fam, like, she needs to be burnt. She needs to be burnt. She has done the imaginable. And I feel like this conversation, like, is just um, very interesting. Kind of reminds me of Jesus Christ when, I um, mean, it was the scene that this woman was caught in idolatry and was like, you know, if there's anyone amongst you that has not committed any sin, that sh they should basically um, throw the stone. If you, if you feel like you're righteous and you're holy and you've not sinned, throw the freaking stone, you know, and they dropped the stone when they were about to stone her to death because, again, the law of Moses said that if you do commit adultery, that you should be stoned to death. And so they dropped the stone and they walked past. They walked, they walked away. Um, and this kind of reminds me of Judah being the one with the stone, wanting to throw the stone at, you know, um, Tamar. And it's like, he was sinful himself, you know, like he was sinful the very first day that he decided to basically neglect the desires of the lord the, the the commandments of the lord that you shouldn't marry outside of your tribe you should not be unevenly yoked with an unbeliever she she you know is a, a well tamar 
we're dealing with this you are okay this is a canaanite person okay and it's like at this point in verse 25 it says when she was brought forth she sent to her father in law saying by this man by you know like when someone is actually accusing you for something like and is pointing the finger at you in politics you, they say what you to point the finger back to this person <laughs> do you know what i mean like I'm not taking accountability for this. You take accountability for yourself. You are also responsible. Um, I'm, yeah, we're, I guess like what is this way? This is like a conflict. You know what I mean? There's a conflict. You are the you are the one at fault, or I'm I'm the one at fault. Like you two are the one at fault. You know? Yeah. And it's like pretty interesting now. And it says this man. Where is it again? It says and it came to pass three months. Da, da, da. Um. It says um. She was brought forth and she sent to her father in law saying, By this man. This man she called him. She didn't say a father in law. She said she called him this man. This guy, you know, like this guy, this man. It's like taking respect from him. Like this man, you know. I, I, and the question is, like, how did she even know that there was a, a probability that it was going to do what it did? Like, it's so crazy. Like, how did she foresee that? That it would see her and a lot, and then basically, like she's not a handle, but she did play the a lot, right? Um, how would how did she predict that? And I feel like we didn't really talk about verse twenty four that says that behold, she is with child by whoredom. You know, in this day and age, in the twenty first century, to have a child outside of um, well, is it outside of wedlock? Is that how you say or in wedlock? Um, is regarded as like doesn't really matter like everyone does it anyway so like you know don't like doesn't nobody cares you know nobody cares nobody cares okay you've not met the father the mother you've not got actually got him married legally nothing you know it's just you just get pregnant like that you have like multiple kids with someone that you're not married with you know that is a that those are the bible says those are children by whoredom okay so she went to play the heart. I know like, there are a lot of people that don't want to hear this conversation. Um, and it's okay. And I feel like in the in the in the kingdom of God, like to actually gain, you know, remission of sin, to gain that forgiveness, you need to own up to what you've done. Do you know what I mean? Um, and she's like, by this man, you know, this man. And I think like, yeah, I, I like the fact that she literally pointed the finger back because men in this situation when a, a woman actually gets pregnant and she is an unmarried woman it's usually like she's the one that would, they would look at the society would look at the woman and say wow she was the one that was loose she slept with the guy or yeah basically slept with the guy she didn't she's not you know someone of great values and they don't actually keep the guy accountable like the guy is basically the one that oh he has his own life yeah 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 maybe it was it's a it's a she was the one that was dressing provocatively and the guy basically just fell um they say a bunch of like excuses why you know men should basically get away with you know actually committing the same sin that the woman did commit you know even when the woman from the jesus story like when she committed adultery we didn't see the man in the sin it was the woman that was actually persecuted she was the one that was going to be stoned the question now is like this woman is speaking out for herself like the woman that was about to be stoned in the jesus story like she didn't say anything you know she was only she only spoke when jesus christ actually told her and asked her a question you know like tamar actually said this <laughs> do you understand that part just like this is the man this is him by this man the man whose these are am i with child okay and she said discern i pray thee whose are these the signet the bracelet the staff she got evidences do you know what i mean like she got evidence she's a woman that was pained she felt like injustice was done towards her a woman that is like that is pain by injustice is a woman that will that she can do the unthinkable but we can see like the the lawyerish part of tamar like she really stood up for herself and i feel like i i like that i really do i like the fact that she stood up for herself i don't know how she 
predicted that he was going to see her and he was, he was going to want to have sexual intercourse with her. Um, I don't know how she did that. She was the one that played the entire, she controlled the entire plot. And I'm saying men, like, you think that women are basically lower than you or don't have certain power, but be careful because women, you know, we think a lot, we're thinkers and like we can basically if you know when two women join together <laughs> stop playing so don't go out here and be wronging people do you know what i mean don't go out here and be moving mad don't do that actually don't don't do that don't do that you just don't know you know same person that oh but i have the grace of the lord upon me my my life when i do da, 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 da. but it's like yeah but what about the time where you went to sleep with someone that wasn't your wife? What more about the time that you, you decided to do something crazy? You know what I mean? And I think this is pretty interesting. I, I think Tamar is very interesting. Um, I think that, you know, this situation, I feel like there, there's a spiritual connotation to what we see here. I think that, you know, she is a Canaanite woman and it's possible that she was dealing with devils. Um, I think that she was idolatrous herself. Um, I think that, you know, there's just a lot of like, she was willing to get dirty so that she can actually get what she wanted. This was a very sinful woman, you know, in as much as we can, we can look her, at her character and say that, well, this is a woman of so-called power or she has, you know, certain abilities to get what she wants. But the fact is that she doesn't respect the Lord. She disobeyed the Lord. You know, she, she also like put herself in danger. It just shows that she lacks self-love, you know? Um, and you can obviously see that there is something, there's a spiritual connotation to this. How did she know that this man was going to sleep with her? Do you know what I mean? How did she know? Um, was it through seduction? Even if it was through seduction, like, like, we, again, we know that, you know, Judah was, it seems like he's a very loose guy. Um, so that's pretty, also pretty interesting. Like people can live in the same household and kind of study each other to know what this person witnesses, what this person's strengths are. Um, so that could also be that part through studying the person and observing the person, but also it can be spiritual connotation. Like how do you really know to actually be there, that position yourself there to plan everything now, to ask them for certain things and do all of those things. It just really feels like a sieve. Like it feels like a sieve. It might be that she was dealing with familiar spirits or she was just like very observant and planned everything now with her friend that they tell her, you know, where it would be. There's a lot of things that could have played out there, but um, definitely we see foresight here and we see a lot of planning, mitigation, but this is a mitigation for evil, okay? Um, so definitely, I feel like a lot of people that are doing evil, you're doing evil, you think you're getting away with it, but the truth is that you're not getting away with anything. Like life on this earth, we have life on this earth. That's like literally like what, phase one, you know? Like life continues, like we are, we are infinite beings, you know, like <laughs> we have spirits inside of us. We're infinite beings. Like your spirit is not, it's, it will be judged. Your spirit will be judged, not just your body. Your body doesn't just decay. Your spirit will be judged for everything that you've done and you will suffer for it for eternity. Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. Only through Jesus can you gain eternal life. Only through Jesus can you be saved there's only through Jesus, only through Jesus. The authority was given to just one man. It was by one man that we were saved, okay? One man, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is real. He's very real. Um, so basically, yeah, um, and it says here that she basically pointed out to the guy that did what, she, what he did to her, you know, um, because he asked. He basically asked that, can I sleep with you? And she's like, well, if I do this, and they trade it, you know, he asked for it, you know, like I didn't ask for this. Like you asked to get yourself, you know, in the mud with me was what she's basically saying. Like, yeah. And he's like, well, let's burn her. And she basically, yeah. <laughs> before she was like, he was like, let's burn her. But you know, there's something about men taking accountability. I respect that. Verse 26, it says, and Judah acknowledged them. You know, there are some men that don't actually take accountability for what they've done. Like, you do something really, really shitty, but you don't. You're not accountable for it, you know? Even when the person that, that you offended, you know, in this case, they didn't... Listen, <laughs> you offended her now. You offended her. In this situation, like, you know, you offended her. 
So men, you offend the person and you don't have the guts, the audacity. <laughs> I'm going to use the right hand. The audacity to say, you know, ah, I'm at fault. This is where I'm at fault. I'm sorry. This is where I'm at fault. Um, this is what I've done. You know, please, men, I'm going to read this verse out. Or if you're a woman and you don't know how to apologize, I will read this verse out. So you better learn. How do you apologize? Let's check how to apologize in verse 26. Hmm? The Bible talks about, it says, Judah acknowledged them. He acknowledged everything that Tamar was saying. Tamar is not a, she's not an innocent person at all. She's not innocent. In fact, she's, she's quite the, the, a thing, you know? It says, Judah acknowledged everything. Do you understand? Like, even if she was wicked, evil, you know, a controlling person, you can see, a bit narcissistic too, even though she was all of those things, but he had to be, you know, accountable for what he'd done. Judah acknowledged them and said, she has been more righteous than I. So he acknowledged that she's quite shitty, but I'm like, he told, he told himself, <laughs> and he's quite shitty, shitty are, uh, than she is because that I gave her not to Shela, my son, and he knew not, he knew her again no more. So he promised her something, you know, promised her something, but just ignored her, abandoned her, you know, in her father's house. And she was waiting, waiting, waiting. She saw the opportunity and she used it. Pretty interesting. And it says here, and it came to pass in the time of her travel. So even what Judah even, you know, um, acknowledged, you know, is like, it didn't even say that it was one that slept with his, his daughter-in-law. In the book of, of Leviticus, should we go there? In the book of Leviticus, I think it's chapter 18. Should we go there? It says that if you sleep, if a man sleeps with his daughter-in-law, he should be dead. You ought to be dying. <laughs> he ought to die. Oh, this English is very interesting. Okay, give me one second here. I feel like I'm just multitasking. Um, let's begin. Oh gosh, Leviticus chapter eighteen. Um. Okay, check it out. I think it's pretty interesting. I read it the other day. Like it's so good. Like if a if a man if a, if um the the father in law sleeps with the daughter in law check Levit Leviticus eighteen and nineteen it's possible that it's in nineteen um the man ought to be dead okay the man should not be alive he should be gone okay and at and at this point you can only but tell that it is only through the mercy and the favor and the grace of the Lord that Judah is still alive today okay it's only through that. And it's only because that the Lord still sees that this guy still serves some purpose. And this is why it's very important. As a children of the Lord, your purpose and your calling is like insurance. <laughs> it's insurance, okay? Like, it's, you know, you need to have a purpose. What are you, why are you, why are you here? You understand? Why are you, why are you on this planet? You have to have your own personal, you know, purpose. You have to be alive for something. Do you understand? Judah did have one, and that's the reason, and I believe that that's the reason why the Lord did have mercy on him. Doesn't mean that the Lord, he will not be judged. The Bible talks about the consequences of sin, is death. He will experience death in some way or the other, but death has a way of, because death is an entity. It has a way of coming for, to, to, to get what it is, it's, it's, it's an entitlement, you know? It comes to get what is its entitlement. And that's the person, the sinner's life, you know? Anyways, um, and it came to pass when she traveled that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying, this came out first. And it came to pass as he drew back his hand that, with, that behold, his brother came out and she said, how hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore, his name was called Phares. And after came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his head, and his name was called Zerah. 
and i think that this is pretty interesting like what just happened kind of reminds me of well, guess judah and uh, sorry that's a judah jacob <laughs> jacob and esau you know jacob and esau's story and i feel like we've been talking about repeating cycles like repeating cycle things happening over and over and over again and, I, and the only reason like why this thing is happening repeating cycle is because of sin you know sin as a way of like causing people to be stuck you know causing people to be stuck yeah it's pretty interesting similarities between i'm trying to think about similarities between abraham and jacob um we talked about um lot that was repeating cycle that abraham and jacob it was a positive like similarity that we saw you know in terms of in terms of their, their priesthood but in terms of like um lot and, and uh and esau was it esau yeah lot and esau like it was a negative repeating cycle like we can see that for sure like it was negative and we can see this also in the story like the same repeating cycle happening like taking them back again to yeah, jacob and, and esau story and just that happening like this guy Ferez is basically like gonna be um leaving the same thing that jacob actually lived you know and was it was it jacob or yeah Ferez Ferez was the one that actually came out after his his brother zara right so that that that's basically like yeah um i don't know if it's zara or or Fares, anyways, I think it probably is Zara because it was, it was the one that came out first um, instead of his brother. I'm not sure, but anyways, um, let's read that again. How it's yeah, it's definitely Fares. It was the one that came out first instead of his brother Zara. Um, anyways, um, that is basically the conversation for today. Sin keeps you stuck. Sin keeps you repeating the same cycle, almost like generational curses, like, you know, that's what sin does. The only thing that can bring a person out of a generational curse is, is righteousness, is literally like accepting that Jesus Christ died for you on that cross. There's no other way to, uh, to salvation apart from, you know, Jesus Christ this is the only way, the truth and the life. I keep saying that over and over again, you know, that people in your lifetime that they will repeat the exact same things that their mother, their fathers went through and they will experience it even worse. It's like I say, you're going through the same patterns, like things happening in your life. The same people that your parents dealt with will resurface into you in your life over and over again. And these are strongholds that the enemy has planted in your destiny, in your life, so that you can bring you in the same destination that your parents ended up, you know, which is the same place. The, again, the consequences of sin is what death. Death presents itself in many different ways, you know drunkenness depression name it poverty name it guys this is the conversation that we're having today this is what we're saying you know um sin should have no place in our lives and that we need to fight this good fight in love you know and in peace because and always 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 something that I've, i was reminded about today is that we always need to speak forth the word of the lord speak it forth regardless of what we're going through just always speak the word of the lord speak it forth that we will know that our lives are not our own that we would that that, that we, we can acknowledge that the word of the lord is literally coming to pass in our lives that we're basically just living out the desires of the most high god and let our lives align to the will of the Father, that it might please the Lord. And we can only please the Lord through faith. Hallelujah. So guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. Thank you, Abba Father. I worship you for you are a good God. Thank you, Father, for your protection, for being our defense. Thank you, Father, for being our joy. Thank you, Father, for being our Lord. We glorify your name, O Lord. Abba, be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I worship you, God, for what you're doing in this ministry. I pray that as we've received your word, you've heard it. I pray that we'll not just hear it anymore. I pray that we're going to do something about it, that we will hear that it is good to be righteous. It is good to surrender ourselves unto you. It is good to walk in, in your commandments and your laws, O Father. 
Abba, we glorify your name. We worship you, O oh God. We thank you for that all yokes have been broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for anyone out there that is going through hardship. In this time, maybe they're struggling with sin. I pray, Father Lord, that you give them strength to overcome. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree in your life that you have overcome. In the name of the Lord Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Walk in freedom now and declare the word of the Lord upon your life. Irregardless of whatever, whatever you're going through. Irregardless of whatever the situation might look like. You are victorious. You are an overcomer. You, katabali, brodos katabali, a greater is either that is in you than he that is in the world you have won because christ first did and christ is at work inside of you even now about we glorify your name oh god i pray that you prepare spirits to receive your word tomorrow as we come back here in jesus mighty name glory be to you your holy name oh lord in jesus name i pray amen guys thank you so much for watching my name is abundata yoga thank you so much i will see you tomorrow bye